right, here we go, guys. My Rogue One, a Star Wars story spoiler review. That's right, spoilers are going to be discussed in this video. You have been warned. You were warned before you even clicked on this video, idiot. Free throat hugs. What's happening, my film nerds? David the Film Junk here, bringing you my spoiler review of Star Wars Rogue One. That's right, I still want to call it that, but no, it's Rogue One, a Star Wars story. If you haven't seen my regular review, it's on my channel. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I would suggest you see the movie first and then come back here and you can discuss, you can post something down below, stuff that you loved about it, stuff that you hated about it. This is it's just a free-for-all, guys. So if you haven't seen the movie, well... What is wrong with you? So here we go, guys. Let's talk about Rogue One. Let's talk about the awesome. Let's talk about the not so awesome. First off, ugh, did anybody else feel like they were gonna do the opening scroll or at least have the title go beep? Man, that was build up to just like blue balls. I'm just saying because they had the Lucasfilm logo being all shiny and shimmery and stuff like that. And I was like, ah, and everybody started cheering like, yes. And then it said, Long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, and I'm going, are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? And then it just kind of went, um, just showed a planet. Okay, now, I was thinking about this. They didn't have to have the opening scroll, but what would have been cool if they still had the Star Wars logo go, like that, but the Star Wars could have kind of like morphed like separated or you know moved down and then they put a star wars story and then put rogue one like right there <sighs> you gotta love it when uh you're you're filming a review and you just randomly sneeze like that <laughs> that's fun i'm keeping it in the video anyways guys i'm just saying i think a lot of people were kind of disappointed because even in my movie theater they were like um all right, that was kind of like a whatever. And then when they actually showed the title of Rogue One, it was kind of anticlimactic. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of disappointed in that. I'm not, I mean, it's whatever. It's just the title, but it's just, I don't know. I'm a sucker for a good opening title. And they really could have did that. Bring the words back, and then it kind of just morphed. And then it went to a Star Wars story, and then Rogue One right in the middle. They don't listen to me. Right off the bat, we meet Galen Urso, of course, uh, Jin Urso's father, uh, played by Mads Mikkelsen, and uh, we kind of see where they're at, and he's kind of becoming a he's become a farmer, and uh, of course, the uh, antagonist of pretty much the entire movie, which is uh, what's his name, Orson Krennic, yeah, who's played by uh, Ben Middleson, who is also in. Uh, I was like, who is that guy? And then I was like, oh yeah. He played Daggett in Dark Knight Rises. They show up with some of the Black Stormtroopers. Ooh, those guys are fucking awesome looking, I must say. And, uh, you know, of course, they want him to come aboard to build the Death Star, and they're going to kill his family and everything. And Jin, of course, gets away. She, she hides in, like, a little bunker that's under a rock. And uh, the Stormtroopers are looking for her and everything. They, they kill the, the mom. Um, I believe she died, right? Yeah. Um, I know they shoot her, you know, sometimes, you know, those lasers don't exactly kill people in Star Wars universe. Come on now. And then we get Forrest Whitaker's character, Saw Guerrera, who finds Jin or so. You know what's kind of, fun, kind of funny? One of the Stormtroopers actually pulled up a Stormtrooper doll, which I found a little weird. I'm like, all right, the Stormtroopers have their own merchandise in this world. Cool. Fast forward into the future and like right off the bat too, which was kind of cool because... It almost reminded me of Guardians of the Galaxy because Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, went to multiple places and, of course, it had it showed what the planet was called or the city was called. And it was doing that with Rogue One and it had to do that to introduce the characters, which you don't really see much in a Star Wars movie. You really don't see, oh, what's this planet called? You just hear the name when, you know, through dialogue later on, you know, from one of the characters. We get introduced to Diego Luna's character, who is uh, Cassian Andor. I have to read these names because it's Star Wars. You know, they come up with some crazy names. But we get introduced to him, and we find out that he's some sort of kind of rebel spy. Okay? We don't exactly know, like, what he's doing, but he's he's confronting somebody who has information about this new weapon that uh, the Empire is creating. And instead of just, like, you know, getting it and being like, thank you very much, he actually does shoot the guy. So you're going, okay. This guy's not all good. Honestly, I really wanted to know more about, um, what's his name? Cassian Andor. Uh, Cassian. Cassian! I really wanted to know more about Cassian because the whole rebel spy thing just, that sounds appealing to me. It really does. And we didn't really get much. We didn't really get much. He does have, like, an outburst later when he's talking to Jin, 
talking about that he's been doing this since he was like six years old. And he, and he said like, you know, he got sick of it where he's finally doing something about it. But we didn't know much about his character. We saw something too where he talked to somebody before he boarded the ship with Jin on it. And they're like, you know, he kind of just gave him some orders. And we get that he's like a spy, but we just don't know mo too much about his character. And that's really where Rogue One suffers from. He's like, we just don't know much about these characters. I just wanted to know a little bit more. But I know it's difficult because there's multiple characters as well as a story that has to tie into the saga films. So I know it's pretty difficult to do some storytelling like that. But I think if they could have just taken a little time and stuff like that, they could have just, you know, just a little bit. We get introduced to Riz Ahmed, Med's character. His name is Bodhi Rook, who's like a pilot. He says he's a pilot. He's actually a, a pilot that's trying to get a message to the rebels from Galen to let them know, like, hey, guess what? There's a big fucking huge planet star thing that's going to destroy planets, and I built a little vent in there that you can, <laughs> you guys can, you know, penetrate it. Yeah, I turned it sexual. He gets captured and then Saw Gerrera kind of questions him and wants to make sure that he's not lying, that he's that he is who he is. And he uses like a weird, like, squiddy looking tentacle monster that apparently can touch somebody and then feel their thoughts and let let Saw know whether they're lying or not. And that that scene was just weird. I didn't really like it. I didn't really like it. It just I don't know. It just felt very out of place. It felt men in blackish, you know? It felt really men in blackish to me, you know? Like, not men in black one. I'm talking about men in black two. I just really did not like that. It, it just didn't make too much sense to me. And apparently the monster just really, like, I mean, he was traumatized after that because after um, they're on the planet uh, or the city of Jeddah uh, and uh, they're captive they're they're held captive and they find they find um what's his name god i really bodhi they find him also captive and then he's just like huh huh he's all stunned like yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a pilot i'm yeah uh, and then he mentions that he's coming that he's trying to bring a message from galen and of course jen is like Hello. when on that planet they meet um uh they meet donnie yen's character chiriptu amwi and then of course his buddy which is Baze Malbus. Man, where do they come up with these names? I mean, I tell you what, they might just... That B, A, B, Z. But you meet them and you understand that, yes, he sh he should be on this because the Jedi is supposed to be like the origin, like the origin city of the Jedi, which I think would be a pretty awesome movie if they actually show the origin of the Jedi. Just saying, might happen. We see him kick a little ass. We see all that. There's a fight on there too. We also see him bump into the... Uh, the dudes from the cantina and the new hope who's like who's got like all oh, what are they all the death sentence like um you know he eventually the the guy with like the balls coming out of his or whatever the fur the, the little p lips right here where he gets like his arm cut off by obi-wan in the cantina we see those guys he bumps into them i thought that was a little bit much but it was kind of like okay a little fan service that's fine i'll deal with that there's plenty of fan services on here and i don't think they overdid it i really don't um not even the whole C-3PO and R2-D2 thing. I mean, I think that was great. But they have to show. I mean, if you think about it, it's not a Star Wars movie without those two. If you, they've been in every Star Wars movie, okay? So you have to show them. And it was a glimpse, one little thing. You know, he says something, and then blah, 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 And then that, that's it. That's all they needed. And it wasn't overdone because you know that they were there. You know eventually what they're going to do. You know that R2-D2 is going to receive those plans. So it's like, okay, yes, that's fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. But the other one, the other two is like, okay, so they must have escaped because Jetta got fucking annihilated by the Death Star, which was an absolute beautiful sequence. Slow motion with the score was just, I don't know. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. It was pretty awesome. That's where Saul Guerrero, of course, dies. Um, that was interesting. Okay, now let's talk about some of those characters that we did not know were going to show up. And this is what's great about keeping secrets, okay, Warner Brothers? I'm talking to you. Let's... <laughs> Take a page out of these out of Disney and Lucasfilm, okay? We didn't. Who knew? We we kind of suspected that there would be a hint or there'd be a feel of General Tarkin, but we didn't know we were actually gonna fucking see the guy. Wow, that was amazing! I was like blown away. Like, holy shit, that's General Tarkin. He's right there. I did, however, think he might have been in a little too much because he's in an, a multiple scenes. I didn't think he was gonna be in that many scenes, but he's in multiple scenes, and. Yeah, I mean, it could have been a little too much, but overall, I was like, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. You know, he is pivotal to this story, and then he's pivotal to the next story, so I guess it's okay, but I just thought, mm, 
you know, because you know it's the whole CGI thing going on in the face. Even though the actor looks looks a lot like him, I must say. I saw a picture of the guy, and I was like, oh, they didn't have to do much with that. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I just thought maybe it was a little too much, but it, it was cool. But what what's really awesome about Rogue One 2 is, like, the fact that the matter is they addressed that issue that, that everybody always griped about, that it... You know, when, when it came to A New Hope and there's like, okay, there's just like a random vent in the Death Star that's easy to penetrate and just blows the whole thing up. What the fuck? But of course we find out that Galen Erso is the one that actually put it in there because he was forced to make, to engineer the Death Star. So he put this little weakness that nobody spotted and he's like, all right, I'm going to get this message to the rebels and they're going to come and just fuck that little hole. God, why do I turn it sexually? So that really helps. That helps the future saga films. It makes them better. Because when I, I, when I was editing my original review, I put A New Hope on and it's just like, yes, now I know why that's there. Because it's just, it seems so, it kind of seems like too convenient at first when you watch A New Hope and you're like, okay, why is that there? And then now we find out and they actually worked with it. And this is what, this is how you capitalize on an, an existing story. Sometimes movies can't do that when they like change up stuff and it just, they try to make either a sequel work or a prequel work. It just doesn't work. George Lucas, I don't even think he acknowledged his previous movies when he made the prequels. Let's talk about Darth Vader. This guy right here. Oh my god. Okay. It was a little disappointing that he wasn't in it that much. I was kind of hoping for more. But um, that first sequence, man. When he's like, uh, when um, Krennic walks into the room and he's in that, ah, what's that tube called? It's similar to the one that Luke was in in Empire Strikes Back. He's in there and it just lifts up and the, the fluid drains and you could kind of see the white fucked up skin, almost Frankenstein looking in. There's the tubes and everything. I wanted to see more of that. Oh my God, did I want to see more of that. Oh, it just looks so awesome. And uh, He did, however, have a very punny line. <laughs> When it came to Krennic and he said, don't choke on your aspirations when he was actually doing the choke thing. And I was going, okay, that, that was a little too cheesy, but it's fine. That's Vader for you. But that last scene that he was in, oh my God. Oh my God. And he knew it was like, okay, when the whole third act was happening and the rebels were like storming the beach and they were all doing that. And you're going, where's Vader at? Where's Vader at? I don't know where Vader is. But then when it started reaching the end, you're like, okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. These guys are going here, going there. Oh my God. Oh my God. Where is he? Vader's going to show up. Vader's going to show up. And he did. Oh my God. Did he did. I have goosebumps. Just talking about it right now, guys. All those guys just show up and Vader's just like in the dark and his lightsaber. That's exactly what my penis did. And he just starts fucking these guys up. I mean, he's just repelling all the lasers and everything like that. He's like lifting guys up. He's holding his fist up and just, oh my God. That was the Vader that we've deserved for so long. And I'm going to do a video about something about him, uh, which is probably already up on my channel, on my other channel most likely. So go watch that. It's a little bit of a Vader spinoff pitch that I thought about and I'm sure a lot of people did after seeing that scene. So back to the original story, we have Jyn Erso of course like talking to the uh, talk to the rebels about hey you know my father has these plans and we have to get to this location. I forgot what the location was, I forgot what it's called, but we have to get there and get the plans so then we could destroy this Death Star and of course the rebels are like no we shouldn't do that. So naturally being who she is, she's going to rebel against the rebellion, um, and then she's going to get a bunch of other people, and they're going to storm the beach, and they're going to get the plans, blah, 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 but then the whole rebellion just goes, okay, let's just do it, let's just go, let's just go, and what was really awesome, too, is in the whole theater, cheered, we had, like, red leader, gold leader, and everything like that, and apparently, apparently they used stock footage from A New Hope, so that was, that was, like, original footage, they didn't just, like, do the CGI thing or bring the actor back, it was just, like, stock footage that they used, but there was one thing I was looking for as soon as, and I even said it in the theater when they showed all that, I was like, where's Porkins? Show me Porkins. Come on. He didn't get enough credit in the first one. But of course they didn't show Porkins. A little disappointed, but it's okay. I can deal without Porkins. So of course they get the Death Star plans and everything's all good. They get it up to the, I mean, it was just an intense sequence. I mean, everything. That whole, the X-Wings and everything like that, the AT-ATs, the Storm on the Beach, I mean, it, it put the war in Star Wars, which a lot of people were like, you know, I mean, eh, yes, there's always war in there, but it's just, it felt like an actual war movie, which was great. And then, of course, you knew that the, all the characters were going to die. And this is where it just, it didn't hit me because 
I didn't really care about these characters. There's just not enough characterization. The only one that I was sad to see die was K2SO. I dug his character because I liked him. He was funny, he was quippy, and he was a little bit of a badass. He was shooting stormtroopers and stuff. I really loved that character. And when he actually finally was taking shots, and then finally when he just... I was sad. But when everybody else died, well... The Donnie Yen one, when he's like, I am one with the Force, the Force is one with me, or whatever the heck he says. But by the way, they say the Force a lot in this movie. That part right there was cool when he's just like holding up his stick, and then he's walking out, and then he gets he gets to hit the switch, and then he does get shot, and then his buddy, of course, you see him like sad. And that's the thing, it's like I really wanted to know more about them. It just, I didn't think there was enough. You could tell that there was like a long-term friendship there. They were brothers. And you just wanted to know a little bit more about them. And then, of course, there's, like, websites saying, like, is this our first gay couple in the Star Wars universe? Shut the... No! Get over yourself! Anyways, I'm not going to go off on that. But uh, I just wish there was just a little more. I just wanted to see a little bit more because that friendship just seemed pretty awesome. And that part was really cool. And that was pretty sad. I did feel a little bit right there, but I felt more about K2SO. Didn't really care about Jyn Erso and uh, Diego Luna's character Cassian. I didn't really care about them dying. But, I mean, he knew it was going to happen. He just knew it was going to happen because he knew it was going to happen. And then when they were trying to get the plans and go and go, I mean, that even though you knew that, the, that they were going to get the plans, I was still on the edge of my seat. I'm like, is this actually going to happen? It's... It's getting close here, guys. What the fuck? You got a hint of Bale Organa, Jimmy Smith's character. You saw him before, and they even acknowledge about Obi-Wan Kenobi a little bit earlier in the movie. And I was like, ooh, that's pretty cool. I like that little Easter egg. And then you see more of him. And then, of course, you see the plans. And then they open up one of the rooms, and you see her standing there with the back towards us. And I was thinking, okay, are they going to show her? I don't know if they're going to show her. They're probably just going to hand it to her, and there's going to be some line and whatever. But they handed it to her, and she freaking turned around, and, and uh, I forgot exactly what she said. I only saw it once, sadly. I haven't seen it twice yet. But um, she said something like, it's it's for a hope or a new hope or something like that. Apologize, I don't know the line. You see her face. I mean, the reason why I don't know, because the whole theater that I was in erupted. So did I. I was like, holy shit. So there you have it, guys. That is my spoiler review of the movie. I can't wait to see it again. I was going to see it again over the weekend, but just with Christmas and everything, it just got too crazy. Other things going on, too. Uh, I do want to see it again. I know it's going to be better the second time. But, I mean, just overall, I just think the characters needed a little bit more. The The first two acts do drag a little bit, and there is quite a build-up to the third act. But that is Gareth Edwards. I mean, if you watch Godzilla, he did the same thing. He built it up to that third act, and that third act was amazing, just like it is here. And it's, it's pretty awesome. But I am one of those people that liked Force Awakens more than Rogue One. Not like a ton more, but it just did. I just did. But And if you, you know, it's whatever. That's just my opinion, guys. If you liked Rogue One more, that's fine. I'm glad you did. I wish I did. I wish I liked it a lot more, too. But that's just the way I feel, guys. So anyways, let me know. Let's have a discussion. Have some, uh, make some comments down below in the balls area, guys. What did you love about the movie? Let's have a spoiler discussion. You know, it's a free-for-all. So let me know what you thought about everything down below. You know, make some comments comments and everything like that if you agree with me on some things that's cool anyways guys make sure you subscribe to my channel subscribe to my other channel too make sure you hit that like thumbs up visit filmjunkie.com for all my news videos and then follow me on the sock mints that are floating by my head all right guys i'll talk to you later